Hi everyone and welcome back. My name is Claire Carmichael. I'm a registered nurse and a lecturer. And today's video is all about neurodiversity with a special focus on dyslexia. And I really wanted to do this video because I have struggled my whole life without knowing the reason. And it's only by chance that recently when I became a lecturer at university, I wanted to have an assessment for dyslexia myself because I knew that something wasn't quite right, but I never wanted to get the support or the help because I found other ways around things. So I didn't really find it a problem as such, but in my role as a lecturer at university, I didn't want my problems to affect the students and that was my biggest priority was I want to be able to be a role model to my students and I don't want to get it wrong for them if I'm marking their assignments and things like that um, so I wanted to have an assessment and if I need any support to have it in place so that I can get it right for my students and hopefully give people help tips and advice along the way as I discover more about this and myself. So what is dyslexia? Dyslexia is a learning difficulty. It usually affects your reading and writing. For my case, it's reading, writing and speaking. But dyslexia is a neurological condition. It's that process of information in the brain and something's just not linking up. And dyslexic people may have problems with processing and remembering the information that they see and hear. But it can also affect things like organisational skills. So I have my laptop for this one. So signs of dyslexia in adults. Um, because more and more people are being diagnosed as, ad as adults and don't realise some of the signs and symptoms. So there is a big list here. I cannot remember this list, so I have my laptop. Um, so do you, signs, confuse visually similar words such as cat and cot, spell erratically, find it hard to scan or skim text, read or write slowly, need to reread paragraphs to understand them, find it hard to listen and maintain focus, find it hard to concentrate and there's distractions, feel sensations of mental overload and switching off, have difficulty telling left from right, get confused when given several instructions all at once, have difficulty organising your thoughts on paper, often forget conversations or important dates, have difficulty with personal organisation, time management and prioritising tasks, avoid certain types of work or study, find some tasks really easy, but unexpectedly challenged by others. Have poor self-esteem, especially if dyslexic dis difficulties have not been identified in the earlier life. And how many people in the UK have dyslexia? So it's estimated that one in 10 people, but there is an overall estimate of over 6 million people in the UK that may have dyslexia that might not have even been diagnosed yet. So I approached my disability team at the university and I had two assessments. The first assessment I did was a computer-based assessment. So I sat down, I read the screen. The first section was all about puzzles and working things out, which I'm really good at because I've always had computer games. I'm really good at working things out and puzzles. Like I'm a very creative thinker like that. So I knew that section I would be okay at. As much anxiety as that gave me looking at it and trying to work it out, um, I was actually okay with that. And then there was other bits where you had to put the, the words together so they would split up whole words into three sections and you had to put the right sections together and things like that to make the whole word. Um, and then they would be a speaking element so they would speak the word through the headphones and then you had to type the spelling of it and um, then you had to associate um, objects with words as well, something like a tree, and then you'd have a load of random words and you had to associate the picture with the word. So for example, the tree, and then they would have things like bus, car, road, wood. So then you think tree, wood, they must go together. I think, I think that was right. I don't know. I didn't actually look through all of my results properly. Um, but just trying to give you an example of the types of things that I had on my assessment. And then she looked at the results and she wasn't happy with my results. So she asked me to come in to do a follow up assessment, which we did one to one. We sat down, we had paper and it was a written and like um, I interacted with the um, disability assessor for this one. So it wasn't computer paced. It was paper based. It took about an hour and a half, I think, altogether. Um, and for that assessment, gosh, there was loads of different, different, different things that I did. There was the quiz little bits at the start that we did on paper. Um, and then there was ones where you had to highlight the wrong words and then 
you had to speak out words so she gave me um like a whole paragraph to read and but she put the timer on and she would time how quickly you could read the paragraph how quickly you could write out a paragraph um she would say a load of words and i had to write them down as quickly as i could and spell them right um, there was so many different things. Oh, oh, and there was a picture gallery as well. So there was a picture gallery. So there was, I think there were six or nine images, but they repeated themselves. So you'd go to the top and you had to say out all the images. So it was like cat, dog, bus, cat, dog, bus, cat, dog, bus, like, like that. But there was a lot more images to go through. And I got a few of those wrongs as well. I started to say opposite things for things. So there was a lot of, a lot of things in both assessments Um that picked up that I was dyslexic. She said, I can see from your workings out from both the computer-based one and the written one that you're a real thinker. You, you've got those creative thoughts, but your thinking process and your speaking and writing process, there's a problem there, the connection there. Um, and that's where your dyslexia sits. So I have problems with reading out loud, which I knew, spelling and grammar and punctuation, which I absolutely knew, it has always been a problem for me. This is why I've always had people proofread my work in the past and and physically saying words, so new words to me that I don't understand. So I've done many videos before on my own YouTube channel all about how to say medical jargon. I have a book, I have an anatomy and physiology book that sort of phonetically spells all of the words out for you so that you can get how to say medical terminology because I haven't got a clue. I physically can't say words. And I thought that was just me being silly. Um, I didn't actually think that was a dyslexic thing, but apparently that is a very, very dyslexic thing. Um, I know the basic English language, anything above that, I don't know and I can't say because I've never heard those sounds before. I don't know how to write them out. I don't know how to spell them. So that's where those problems come in. All this time I've made a joke about my own disability because it's always been, a running joke with me like oh I can't say this word and me and my patients will have a good old laugh about it because I can't physically say words or medication names and things like that and I suppose that's kind of nice in a way because it does break the ice with my patients and it makes them warm to you like you're a human being you're not this medical person that knows everything um so that's always gone in my favor I think but I've always made a joke out of it without realizing actually I have a, a, the one. A, I have an impairment, and some people might think, "Well, how did you do a degree? How did you do the access course? How have you got on so well in life with this? How have you managed?" Because of my creative side, this is what the lady said to me at the time afterwards. She said, "Because of your creative thinking side, you've got this ability to adapt and overcome." Um, so I, for me personally. Throughout my degree, like I said earlier, I got people to proofread my work. So I got friends, family, things like that to proofread my assignments because I knew my spelling and my grammar was really, really bad. So I always got people to proofread my um, assignments for me before I submitted. And because I can't read medical jargon, because like I was saying, I have problem with new information, big, new fancy words, big academic words for me is a, a complete no-no. I will not understand something. So for me, when I was going out to find pieces of research for articles and things like that, I really, really struggled to read some of them because they were so heavy academically. I couldn't understand it. I have a book actually that I bought, but I've only read a few pages of that book because it's so wordy. I cannot physically read it. I'm reading it and then I can't understand it. So I reread it and then I'm Googling some of the world words to try and get a better understanding of those words. And it's just not enjoyable for me. I like simple, easy to understand words that make sense to me. And so one of the things that I did to overcome this, if I found an article or a research paper that I physically cannot read, it just went. I didn't use it. I found ones that I could understand and I could read. And when I was writing my assignments, usually there's a topic uh, of choice with assignments. Well, the ones that I did anyway, there was always things like sexual health or there'd be long term conditions like asthma, obesity, stroke, things like that. So I picked the one that, that was the easiest for me. And for me, it was always sexual health because I worked in sexual health. I understand the language. So I know that if I pick up a research paper or an article, I'm going to understand it. 
So that is my first top tip for you. If you struggle to understand big fancy academic words, and I think actually most of us will do this, especially as a first year student nurse, you're not academic, you don't understand academic language, you might potentially struggle with this, whether you have dyslexia or not. So just a top tip for me is, if you don't understand it, completely scrap it and find something else or make use of your library, your academic services at university. At Birmingham City University, we had the academic um, development department or personal development department. It used to be called PDD. I made full use of those services. I booked in for one-to-one -one tutorials. Same with the library as well. If I didn't understand something, I went and I got the help. So that is one of my biggest tips. One, if you don't understand it, you don't want to use it, don't use it. Find something else that you can understand. If you physically can't find anything else and you only have this one research paper that you are relying on but you can't understand it, get help and support. Get someone to explain it to you and see if you can use it within your assignment that way. The next thing I did to help me with my assignments was as soon as they launched the assignment brief, I started my assignment there and then because I can't physically do an assignment overnight and I hats off to anybody that can do that, that can just knock out an assignment overnight is, is just incredible to me, but I couldn't physically do that. It takes me a lot longer to find the research, find articles, to read through things, to write things properly, and then to get it proofread as well on top of that is, is really timely. So I literally, I pulled off the assignment brief from our university page and I started my assignment there and then. It just helped me manage my workload. It helped me keep on target and was just the biggest tip I can use for that. But there is a lot of tips and advice on the nurses.co.uk website. There's so many blog posts and videos on assignment writing and assignment tips. Please go and check them out. I'm not going to go too much into detail about that. Now, if you have something like dyslexia, please, please, please get help and support from your disability service. Hopefully you've got a really good team at the university you're at. I know Birmingham City University have got an incredible team. Make sure you get a support statement in place for you because you can get so much support from the disability team. You can get extra funding as well for extra devices you might need for your laptop, uh, colour screens for your laptop so that you, you've got different coloured backgrounds to help you read properly. There's a lot of different support services available to you. You will also get things like extra time for your exams, extra support put in place for assignment writing, for poster presentations or any presentation, anything like that. You will get extra time and different adjustments made for you because of your dyslexia. So please, please, please get that support statement in place and get the support that you really need. Next, I have found just so many things useful since I've been diagnosed with my dyslexia because I've been given the tools to help me. So one thing that I have found, which I'm about to bring up on my laptop and show you, is to do with Word document uh, and when writing your assignments. Some of you may already know this tip, but I never knew this was a thing properly and I'd never used it before. So I'm gonna get up my Word, Microsoft Word. Other platforms are available. So I have got a Word document. These are just some case studies that I randomly typed out for fun one day. Um, but I'm just going to show you a quick tip on Word documents. So if you've written your assignment, you can use a voice activation service to read out your assignment to you to make it make sense. So on Word document, if you go to the top of the bar, so this blue bar here where it says I've got it titled case studies, along next to here, next to the printer, is three little dots click those three dots and then go all the way down to read aloud. That will bring up that little that little emoji there, the A with the little speakerphone. And this will read it out for you. You have a young mother around 24 years old come into your GP for a wound dressing on her child who is two years old. She tells you that she left her child in their high chair in the kitchen whilst she there you go. That is an example. I don't know if you can change the voice on this. Oh, yeah, you can. Hang on a minute. Sorry, I'm getting distracted now. Grandma. Out to the toilet when she returns her baby. Head. That's not for me. Do you know what? I think Daniel was the best one. The resident refuses as she is watching TV and does not want to go. But. Just to give you the option, you can change the voices. I prefer Daniel. You may prefer a different voice tone to what you hear and what you see. 
um so just have a look and have a play around to see what what um difference that can make to your assignments because sometimes you type something and you for me i can't recognize my own mistakes that's one of my biggest problems so i will write something and in my head i write something how i speak it in my head which is completely different to everyday language i think um so i'll be typing something and to me it makes sense so i can't notice my own mistakes but if someone else reads it and they go mm, this doesn't quite make sense claire you need to just reword this like this or your punctuation's off or you need a space or a paragraph or whatever um i can't recognize those mistakes in myself so having this function reading it aloud in somebody else's voice it just really helps me to connect where my mistakes are but not only that I have found this most useful recently when I've been doing marking. So I've been marking student assignments recently. And the biggest thing that I found was there was one sentence or one or two sentences in a couple of the assignments that I read out loud, but in my head, it didn't make sense. It wasn't connecting. I was like, that doesn't sound right. What have they written there? I don't even understand what they've written. Um, it was normal words, but in my head, it wasn't connecting for some reason. And I put on the voice on it and it read it out completely differently to how I read it in my head. And then suddenly it made sense and then I could read it. I read it back after I'd heard the voice read it. And I was like, oh, actually that does make sense. That is a proper sentence. But in that moment, somewhere in my dyslexic brain, it wasn't registering, it wasn't connecting. Those neurons weren't firing to say this is a proper sentence for some reason. Um, so that's been the most beneficial thing in my lecturing role right now. And with that audio voice on Word document, there are so many different apps that you can download onto your mobile phone or your laptop that's going to help you that do that sort of thing for reading different documents and things for you. So it's not just a Word document thing. You can get free apps as well. One of the free apps that I found, let me just go back to this page, is called Claro Speak or Claro Speak. Um, C-L-A-R-O Speak. Just some other apps to go with that. Dolphin Easy Reader, you've got Tint Vision, which uh, can tint your, your screen as well. Also on your screen, if you go on to settings and accessibility on your mobile phone, there's different tints and things uh, and dark mode that you can use for your phone that will help you to read things better. Like I was saying earlier, um, sometimes it's reading it on different backgrounds can really make a big difference. So for me, if my laptop's too white and too bright, it really affects my eyes. Um, so I tend to turn the, the brightness on my laptop down as well. That really helps me. So that might be something that helps you as well. So there is a number of different screen readers for things like Windows, for Apple, if you're a MacBook fan. So some apps for Windows are there's something called JAWS, Job Access with Speech, which works on Internet Explorer, Chrome and Firefox. You've got NVDA, non-visual desktop access. It's free, it's open source reader for Windows computers. You've got Narrator for Windows again. Then for the Apple devices, you've got something called VoiceOver. It's a screen reader for Apple devices, Mac computers, iPhones, iPads, Apple Watch and Apple TV. For Android devices, we've got something called TalkBack, which you can find in the Google Play Store but it already might be built in in some devices. So I'll check your device if you've got this already. Some other useful things to help you if you have dyslexia, especially when you're reading text. So I've spoke about colours, so you're using different colour backgrounds, or you can buy a screen filter or glasses with a tint as well that can help. Changing the font size or zooming in, that's something, again, I like to do as well when I'm reading on Word document. Increasing the space between the rows as well is something that we've always been told to do in uh, our assignment writing anyway. We've always used 1.5 spacing, possibly for this reason, um, and choose a font that you're comfortable with. OK, some useful tips for checking or correcting spellings. I think a lot of us use a lot of Google or iPhone. So using Siri, Cortana, Google Assistant, Alexa, that sort of thing can help you spell words. This is something I do. If I don't know how to spell something, I will ask someone to help me spell it, whether it's my phone, Google.com, that sort of thing. Predictive text as well. Probably another reason why I get by in life is predictive text. However, I'm a really fast typer where my spelling and autocorrect fails me in that sense. So you can't always trust predictive text. 
Voice recognition or speech as well software can help dictate on your phone. Again, on Word document, you've got the detector button so you can speak out things and it will write it for you as you speak. And there's different apps that can help you with that as well. Also, there is something called My Computer My Way. If you Google My Computer My Way, it's by uh, Ability Netrun website and it's got loads of articles explaining how to use different accessibility features and things like that on your devices, your laptop, your mobiles, things like that. It talks about vision, hearing, motor, cognitive, all these different adjustments that you can make. Um, and there's all free tips and advice on there and it gives you all the free platforms as well to download. Also, there's loads of useful contacts to help you. Not only have, you have your university hopefully got all of the contacts and the disability support for you, as well as free software that you might be able to download on your student accounts. There are some other useful resources. So the British Dyslexia Association is just one of them. You've got Call Scotland if you're based up in Scotland, Dyslexia Action and Dyslexia Association. So have a look at all those websites as well. So I hope this video has given you some insight into dyslexia, some of the signs, the symptoms and some tips and advice to help you along the way if you do think that you have dyslexia or if you have dyslexia and you, you just want some more advice. Hopefully this has helped you somewhere. Please, if you suspect you do have dyslexia, go and get an assessment and get the support that you need and deserve to help you succeed like everybody else.